many of you here for this opening ceremony of the Regional Validation Workshop for Model Legislation, Protocols and Guidelines for Health and Food Safety re related to Fisheries and Aquaculture in Cariforum States. My name is Joyce Leslie and I'm your chairman for the opening ceremony this morning. So good morning to all. I would like you now to stand for the National Anthem of Barbados. Please remain standing where we have a moment of prayer. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for all the goodness bestowed upon us. We thank you for all the persons gathered here and all their gifts and talents and contributions and support. We thank you for the opportunity to meet and conduct this important work to advance our member states. We ask that you guide us during our deliberations such that each one of our contributions can be helpful to meeting our objectives. We thank you for all of our leaders, our technical officers and industry workers in the Caribbean region that help to put food on our table. Continue to bless us, dear God, knowing that it is only through your gifts and grace we can succeed. We are grateful for all this for the safe arrival of all participants, especially those from overseas, and pray for their safe return home. Guide us, dear God, and bless us all. This we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Please be seated. I would now at this point like to introduce the members at the head table. On my extreme right is the Dr. Susan Singh Renton, the Deputy Director of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Secretariat. Next to her is Mr. Milton Horton, Executive Director of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism. Also, our future guest, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ms. Princess Lovell Chandler of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Fisheries, and Water Resource Management of Barbados. And next to her, representing the delegation of the European Union of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS and CARICOM and CARIFORUM, Ms. Katia Swenson, Program Manager. 
and last but not least, Ms. Ina Harvey, Eco Representative of Barbados and Management Coordinator for the Caribbean region. I want to welcome those at the head table at this point. And I now hand over to Ms. Ina Harvey to give the welcome remarks. Thank you, Ms. Leslie. Good morning, buenos dias, bonjour. Everybody, thank you very much for your patience. Ms. Princess Lovell Chandler, Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Fisheries, and Water Resource Management. Ms. Katya Svensson, Program Manager, the Regional Section, Delegation of the European Union in Barbados. Mr. Milton Horton, Executive Director of CRFM. Dr. Susan Singh Renton, Deputy Executive Director of CRFM. Let me also recognize in the audience Mr. Collins, CEO of CAFSA. Chris Headley, our consultant from Global Center for International Law of the UK. Senior staff of the Ministry of Agriculture here in Barbados, regional experts all in fisheries and legislation and the production of food for our region. Ms. Carol Thomas, our international specialist in agricultural health and food safety with ECA, members of the media. I'm so happy that this is being live streamed all over the Caribbean. Also, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the ECA delegation in Barbados, it gives me great pleasure to welcome everyone to this regional validation workshop for model legislation, protocols, and guidelines for health and food safety related to fisheries and aquaculture in our Cairo Forum states. Today is a milestone in this project. The fisheries industry moves one step closer to making the Caribbean fish and seafood trade safer and more profitable. This has been made possible through the EU-funded program. Let me put on record our thanks to the EU again for the program on SPS sanitary and phytosanitary measures approved under the 10th European Development Fund which is being implemented by ECA in partnership with CRFM. During the first phase of the SPS program in 2015, a first set of model fisheries legislation products had been developed, covering various key components of the legal and institutional operational frameworks. This included Model Fisheries Export Control Act, Model Fisheries Hygiene Regulations, a proposed Cariforum Regional Fisheries SPS Framework, the Green Paper, eight key Cariforum protocols on good fish and fishery product hygiene practices and guidelines on developing and implementing HASA plans for fish and fishery products. The Global Center for International Law of the UK has been contracted by ECA to continue the development of model, legal, and regulatory frameworks for the fisheries and aquaculture subsectors, particularly focusing on development of an expanded model fisheries SPS Act and expanded model fisheries SPS regulations and instructions and guidelines and explanatory notes for national drafters of legislation consistent with international best practice. Additionally, their assignment includes the development of strategies and packages for use in national and regional consultations and general communication and visibility tools and impact assessment tools. So this is really important. It's laying a foundation to make it sustainable. When these projects finish, we want to ensure that there is a framework and there are trained persons and there are tools that we can use to take things forward. As you're all aware, the specific objective of the SPS project is to increase production and trade in agriculture and fisheries, which meet international standards while protecting plant, animal, and human health and the environment. These two goals of safe food and facilitating trade are entirely <laughs> complementary as trade can only take place if there's full confidence that food is safe. You are here because it's your responsibility to help to create the conditions leading to this confidence. Your tasks in this workshop are to review the outputs of the present consultancy and provide inputs to inform finalization of the documents and endorse the final documents to facilitate CRFM approval and subsequent recommendation to quoted and other CARICOM or CARIC forum bodies. Mr. Andy Sosa, 
Senior Food Safety Inspector in Belize and one of the 18 professionals from CARI Forum who received management training on SPS in Iceland under the project. In describing SPS measures said that SPS could very well mean safe and profitable seafood. The EU SPS project is allowing us to make significant process in getting our food safety systems right. To put in place a new body of powerful and up-to-date legislation and to have a single voice on food safety issues at national and regional levels. Let us not lose this opportunity to improve our food safety standards and so enable CARICOM fish exporters to exploit the opportunities in this trade, which is already worth 315 million US dollars a year. I wish you a very productive session over these two days and I thank you for your attention. I also take this opportunity to wish everyone peaceful and blessed Christmas and lots of good seafood on your plate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harvey, for welcoming all those present in the audience as well as at the head table and also for reviewing the work done so far on the project and we look forward, of course, to the outputs today and tomorrow. At this time, I would like to invite the representative of the delegation of the European Union, Ms. Katya Svensson, to the podium to give her remarks on behalf of the EU. Good morning. I'm lucky, I just said to uh, Ms. Harvey here, because Ms. Harvey went before me, so now I can very lazily say good morning and all protocols observed. It's a great <coughs> pleasure to be here today. Uh, I represent the EU, the EU delegation, and more specifically our ambassador, who, uh, <coughs> excuse me, who unfortunately could not attend this morning. As Mrs. Harvey has already said, this workshop that you're attending today is part of the SPS program, which has been financed under the 10th uh, European Development Fund, and the total budget is 11.7 million euros. It started in October 2013 and will run until March 2017. Now, a commitment to protect plant, animal, and human health lies as a foundation of EU support to the region through this project. And the work that has been done by the Global Center for International Law will be discussed this workshop. And this work includes the model legislation, as well as additional components of the legal and institutional framework needed to operationalize SPS measures as related to fisheries and aquaculture. We're nearing the end of the project there is a light at the end of the tunnel now. And you will be part of the validation process of what has been achieved to date. Needless to say, your input is very important and appreciated. So I would like to take the opportunity to thank you all for your participation and especially those who have traveled to reach here today. Living in an island state, the importance of fisheries cannot be underestimated for your own consumption as well as for export purposes. But the wealth of the sea, however, is not one of infinite resources, hence the importance of sustainable fisheries and aquaculture production. We also know all too well that we do not live in a world free of pollution. The ocean is no exception. As we struggle to put healthy food at the table for our children, we are more and more aware of the need to ensure food safety. Sanitary and phytosanitary measures are essential to allow for trade in fish, but they're also imperative for our own consumer standards. I grew up in Sweden, I'm Swedish. My grandmother came from a family of fishermen. And it was part of my childhood to see my grandmother in the kitchen deboning fish, pickling herring. Herring is a very important fish for Swedish people. We eat it all the time. Uh, cooking cod in a variety of ways. However, uh, as I grew older, uh, it became clear not, not only were the fish resources diminishing, uh, but the quality of some fish was also questionable, something that 
didn't exist at the time when I was young and even less so when my grandmother was younger. We have now clear guidelines from the Swedish government that women who wish to get pregnant, for instance, should not eat herring caught in the Baltic Sea. General population should not eat it more than maximum two to three times per year because it contains dioxin and PCB. This is just one example, unfortunately, and it's certainly not confined to the Baltic Sea. But as you can understand, reports like these cause concern worry among the citizens in Sweden. Uh, but just think of what it would have done to the fishery sector if we had not had a very reputable agency in Sweden that measures levels of toxins in fish and that also makes sure that the fish that are imported from outside Sweden are actually meeting the standards that are, you know, uh, acceptable for human health. So for me, a functional SPS framework is tremendously important. I know how much it means to be able to click online, to go into this website and see the updated, reliable data on toxins in fish, and to be able to trust that whatever I purchase in my supermarket back home has been vetted against rigorous standards. Food safety is such an important topic as it affects our daily lives, the health of our families and communities, as well as regional and international trade. And I want to take this opportunity also to congratulate each and every one of you who have chosen a profession where you can contribute to this vital sector. Seeing as you're coming from countries all over the region, I'm sure your discussions will be very diverse and interesting. And I wish you all the best in today's discussions and tomorrow's. And I echo Mrs. Harvey's sentiment in wishing you uh, a very healthy and happy Christmas and holiday season. I know I will be eating pickled herring, and I will also, since I'm staying in this beautiful country over this season, go down to Oystens and get some more of the local fish. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Svensson, for your remarks. Um, letting us know how f fishing can touch our lives in different ways. Um, thank you also for highlighting the importance of food safety and monitoring. At this juncture, I want to invite Mr. Milton Horton, the Executive Director of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism De Secretariat. The Secretariat headquarters is based in Belize. Uh, welcome. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Ms. Ina Harvey, the IECA representative here in Barbados. Ms. Katha Sevenson from the delegation of the European Union based here in Barbados. Ms. Princess Lovell Chandler, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Food, Fisheries and Water Resources of Barbados. Mr. Stephen Willoughby, the Chief Fisheries Officer. Mr. George Kernan, the Deputy General Counsel of the CARICOM Secretariat. Mr. Simeon Collins, the Executive Director of the Caribbean Agricultural Health and Food Safety Agency. Dr. Susan Singh Renton, my Deputy. <laughs> Carol Thomas, SPS Specialist at AICA. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. I want to extend a special warm welcome to all of you here this morning, all of you from across the Caribbean, as well as our consultant from the United Kingdom, Chris Headley. We have representatives from all the Cariforum states, I understand with just a couple exceptions. I think we're missing Trinidad and Tobago, and we're also missing Haiti. So welcome to all of you who were able to uh, make it. She will join us shortly. She's from the uh, 
Fisher Folk Organization. Madam Chair, I want to take this opportunity to thank the government of Barbados for agreeing to host this workshop here and for assisting us with some of the logistical arrangement for this workshop. On behalf of the CRFM and the CARI Forum States, I also would like to take this opportunity to thank and recognize the contribution of the European Union. The European Union over the years have made significant contribution, not just to our overall economic development and growth in the region, but also to the fishery sector. And uh, Ms. Sevenson, thank you very much for the support. We do appreciate it. and. Um, uh, appreciate uh, the collaboration over the years. The EU has truly been a faithful development partner in providing not just financial resources but technical assistance and knowledge to help us in the region. And we had a conference a couple of years ago. Many, many reports and studies have been done by experts, group of experts, international organizations, industry representative, civil society representative, and these have all highlighted the tremendous potential of the seas, oceans, and inland waters to contribute to economic growth and development as well as to food and nutrition security both now but even more so in the future as the land resources that we have are fully utilized and in some cases even diminished because of our development activities. The marine resources are tremendously important. In September of last year, member states of the United Nations adopted the 2013 Agenda for Sustainable Development and along with that 17 Sustainable Development Goals or the SDGs as they're more commonly referred to, many of which are relevant to the fisheries sector. SDG 14 in particular expressly addresses conservation and sustainable use of oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. But to achieve these goals and to transition our economies to sustainable development and based on blue economy, in order to realize these, our countries must establish and implement an enabling environment. We need to put in place the policies, the legislation, the institutions, the governance reforms, and to build the capacity based on sound evidence-based approach that take into account all the three dimensions of sustainability, that is economic, social, and environmental. And this is why this current initiative to address SPS in fisheries and ensure safe and wholesome fish and seafood are, uh, that, that, that wholesome fish and seafood are available for local consumers and also to strengthen our country's trade capacity is why these things are so important for us today. As in Sweden, <laughs> the fisheries in the region are very important for food and nutrition security, as well as for the livelihoods of thousands of persons and small enterprises across the length and breadth of Caribbean. They are dependent on fisheries and marine resources for their existence. Our countries are all highly dependent on international trade for economic growth and development. We are dependent on the foreign exchange that we earn. Value of international fish trade.